Ron and Kurt, hi. Hey, Tom. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, you're going to help us out on the Rogers Hometown Hockey. Can I say that? I forgot. I'm on my CBC here now. Uh, but anyway, you're coming out down to the City of Legends to help us out when we do that tour. So appreciate look, that, too. I'm very scared of it, Ron, because I, I have to do this essay about my hometown in Newfoundland. And Newfoundland is a place of incredible writers. So I'm looking forward to you. Yes. I'm looking forward to doing a half decent job at it and then getting made fun of at the bar. I lost to Lisa Moore's. <laughs> when I did Q's, uh, you know, Canada Reads, I got beaten by a Newfoundlander. Uh, two Newfoundlanders, actually, inspired to get me on that one. Uh, there was a funny guy from Cornerbrook, Newfoundland, <laughs> Trent. <laughs> Trent McClellan. McClellan may yeah. have uh, been the real reason I lost, but yeah, it was great. <laughs> also, I want to point this out because our producer, Ben, made sure I did that there's a certain irony in me doing this interview because, Kurt, I can't skate. I, there's days where I can't skate, so <laughs> don't worry. I got you back if it's a good day. <laughs> I'm just saying I wouldn't be able to make it onto the show. I mean, so if you're looking for people to do that, I wouldn't be able to make it onto the, the Battle of the Planets. We'll use your other strengths. Yeah, you're right. Uh, at least steering and steering and... Uh... Painting. Uh, Honestly, Tom, the harder trick in this show is the choreography, right? Which is dependent on hearing the music. You can at least do that. I can at least tap my foot. Yeah, none of the hockey guys can, and I know I can't. Without Kurt sort of in the vicinity saying, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> now, stupid. And, and also, it's, we're going left. <laughs> Ron, what's the first week like for competitors on Battle of the Blades? Horrifying. Oh, yeah. Sorry, that's your answer. But can't sure breathe, can't smile, can't. Think of unison as a, you know, don't understand why it's so impossible. Can't hear the songs whatsoever. Uh, yeah, just pressure. You've, you've been rehearsing in broad lighting in the arenas, and now that's spotlighting. Uh, oh, boy, the challenges are myriad. And, and they're just so happy to be competing again that they get past all that and they do it. And I'm amazed because uh, I saw Claude Lemieux do the first ever skate with Shailen Bourne, a figure skater, and he was magic, and I knew we had Ten something. Ten years ago. Yeah. Is there anyone in particular you're a little worried about? Because I know that you on can, this year's edition, yeah, because you got some scrappers in there. I'm, I'm worried about Colton. He's hurt, right? Col so, Colton yeah. Orr. Yeah. Oh, he's hurt. Yeah, he's uh, w w took a figure skating fall, which uh, without an elbow pad on, and uh, he, I, I, if I have the story right, he split his elbow really badly, and it's super sore. So and he's working at lifting his partner, and uh, and I'm worried about him. I think he's I think he's nervous. From his old hockey playing days, he'd had the bursac removed, so he has no That's protection right. to begin with. Uh, oh, so when he hit the elbow on the ice and split it open, uh, it's it's a bit of an issue for him going in. So I can tell he's, you know, again, all the, you know, Kurt's been using a word a fair bit over the last 48 hours, feeling protected. I think that's what all of us really wants in a show such as this, is to feel protected. We're, we're holding elite figure skaters and hockey players in the air. Uh, it's really high risk stuff. So, and but everybody's conscientious and respects that. And a lot of the tough guys, Brian McGrath and Colton Orr and PJ Stock. Yeah, I mean they spent their life. Uh, I kid, you know, it's easy to pick a fight. It's tough to fight the picks, yeah. uh, and they but they're very aware of it. So, <laughs> is there are there challenges love... for the figure skaters too, Kurt? Well, they're to take care of their hockey player. Um, and um, and there's we've got two uh, female hockey players, Amanda Kessel and um, sorry Natalie. Um, Natalie Spooner. Natalie yeah. Spooner. Sorry, I lost my one second. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm getting clamped already. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think that even even though you're you're there, your your job is to not just perform, but you have to take care of your hockey player. Right. And to to do a little, you you joked about you know me saying five, six, seven, eight, but generally you're you're yes. pretty good. But, but no, they not. might blank out, and they they have to like talk them down and talk them through it, and and uh, and really guide their hockey player through this crazy new world of figure skating. And how harsh are you being on the judging side of things? Not harsh at all. I think my job is to help them get through to the next week, you know, to, um, to I have to lay down a number, and that number might mean that you're going home, and that sucks. Right. But, but, but I think the judge's job is to help the audience entertain, be entertained, and to help the audience understand what the players are doing and what they've done right, um, and to gently help them get better for next week. And I hear Tessa and Scott, Tessa Virtue and Scott Moore, will be in, involved this year. Yep, they'll be in shows one and six, and then the finale in, in show seven, and they're going to share a mark. Uh, and Colby Armstrong was uh, going to be in the show, and he got injured. He blew his hamstring right out, mm. saving his partner in a lift that didn't go well. So he will be judging as well. So that's pretty cool that he's coming back to judge the first show. Our show is a little bit like Polaris. So you had Javier Mighty in, and uh, you know it, that's a great combination judging system that's been created for the Polaris Awards. And we have the public, uh, the crowd gets to chip in and vote and we also have the uh, judges marks in, in a, some kind of a, a metric or schematic uh, or analog uh, we come through with a just 
final or bottom two, and they skate off the following week, and then Kurt sends them home, one couple. What's going on with this show? I mean, it's been such a success. I was surprised it took as much time off as it did, and we don't need to get into that. But I, I wonder... <laughs> Us too. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've all been wondering the same thing, but yeah. simultaneously maybe trying to keep my job. What is it about this show that people love so much? Well, f- you know, Tom, it's come to me in the last little while that there's no greater example of good intentions or good wishes amongst people than in sport. Uh, what I've experienced in the rinks when we do the Battle of the Blades is just the energy of the crowd is incredible. Uh, and they're fascinated watching these hulking hockey players and these world-class figure skaters. They're amazed at what's before them and how they work together. And it's a man and a woman. Uh, it's arch enemies, the figure skaters and the hockey players. So I think that whole spirit of collaboration and that just natural lighter energy that comes from the building that night is... Uh, it's what's made it work. I think there's something uplifting about it, maybe that we need right now. Maybe yeah. we, we could use something. I agree. Uplifting. I agree. I think yeah. ethically, yeah. you know, I, and ethics is not fun or entertaining, mm-hmm. but I think the show has a great ethos that is about inclusivity. Uh, certainly, we have Eric Radford who will do his skating on behalf of uh, EGAL, which is for uh, LGBTQ rights, two spirited rights. Uh, yeah, just reminding of, everyone that there's charity money to be won as well. So that's yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, a, yeah. Lot, a lot of good will goes on in this exercise. If you're just tuning in, I'm speaking with Kurt Browning and Ron McLean. Their latest gig is as head judge and host for the upcoming season of Battle of the Blades. I asked you to put your headphones on a bit earlier because I wanted to play you some music. Kurt, right. put yours back on. Take a listen to this. Oh, Antares. There will not be too many people recognize this song. So Kurt, it's Antares. What, what is it? Tell, tell us what it is. I'm a Tragically Hip fan. I got to meet them um, by coincidence. Um, friendships erupted and creativity erupted. And so um, in the studio in Bath uh, in Kingston, um, sitting around trying to figure out, all right, we got this skater, we got this rock group, what are we going to do? And I can't remember who, I think Rob uh, suggested, well, what about Antares? And immediately I'm like, well, I, I'm a Star Trek fan. You mean, you mean like <laughs> from Star Trek? I'm like, eh, kind of. And they were down in uh, New Orleans and, and uh, working on music, and they had this jam session, and this music came out of it. And no lyrics were written for it. There was nothing. It had never really evolved into a song. And uh, they, put it, they played it for me, I thought. Yeah, so we, we tweaked it. We changed it. We stretched it. We, we molded it a bit. And um, Gord Downey started to put lay, lay some, some words into it, so he was just riffing, mm-hmm. and he was like saying Saskatchewan boy, Saskatchewan boy, and, and I'm like, that's, that sounds awesome. I'm from Alberta, but it sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, we never got around to getting some lyrics into it, so not to, and it never made it on an album. So it's you, a hip you, tune that you no one's to heard. It, you skated to it where? At Stars Night, all around the world. Right. Yeah. Wow. And uh, and it was a very earthy. And the last time I ever did a quad in public was to that song in um, Maple Leaf Gardens. Wow. It was two Antares, during Antares. Incredible. Kind of neat. Wow, where'd you pull that from? Like, I don't know, man. We got we got all kinds of researchers here on cool. the radio. Want to play another song? Let's do it again. Well, as boys, we like our fish. Good. Saturday night in Toronto. And I think in... Is he playing Kitchener or is that Glorious Sons? I'm not sure. I got the two tours mixed up, but uh, Dean Brody, obviously, in Canadian Girls. And a lovely story about Dean. He wrote that song and was gracious enough to include me in it. And he said, Ron, what happened is I was writing the song. I was going through Toronto, Pearson Airport, and they had books on sale. And my uh, cornered was in the window, prominently displayed. And he thought, oh, that'll work. I'll, I'll use Ron McLean, you know, to <laughs> signify hockey. Very simple thing. So I ended up, I heard it and I was bedazzled. And I sent... Uh, him a note right away and then I bought him a nice Hockey Night in Canada leather jacket. We we had a beautiful, it was about uh, $500 leather jacket that you could purchase back in the day and I, I gave it to Dean to thank him for that and he, he's always been, yeah, he's a great uh, musician but he's a, he's a great guy. It's a, it's, it's a great song. Well, you know, I was speaking of music, Kurt, what makes a good figure skating song? It has to, it has to, the skater has to believe in it, and and it's interesting you'd, you'd ask that question, and because I'm I'm an optimist, I think you can skate to anything, mm. um, which isn't always a good idea. Kurt. No, right, yeah. um, <laughs> but the hockey players, male and female, in Battle of the Blades, are going to have to believe that this um, this song suits them, and if they don't, then we don't. And, and and I told the players, I said, you know that this is the only, you are the only person that's going to create a solo that's going to be skated to this program. You are the only one that can do that. 
So you will never be compared to anybody else because you're the only one that's going to do this program. Mm. And they all, and a few of them look at me and go, cool. Because I'm not being compared. I'm creating something that's my own. Mm. So a piece of music has to, you know, I mean, it's nice to have, if it has a beat, but uh, beautiful pieces of music. I, you know, anything, but I think yeah. the skater has to believe in it. Natalie Spooner has chosen Dean's Canadian Girls. To, oh. She's actually doing her charity is... Uh, Fast and female, so mm. it's a, a you know girls powers almost Tom powers, but perfect. it's uh, <laughs> perfect. She's raising uh, she's raising some great. And I think you support. get ten percent of every deal. Yes. Wrote it down. <laughs> I think that's how it works, isn't it, Ron? It certainly does. Yes, yeah, so write, write a word, get a third. I think well, that's the term. Get a dirt. Uh, that's, <laughs> okay, we're gonna have. A, I was hoping we could play a little game right now. Uh, it's called ice it or save it. I'm gonna play you some music for you right oh, now. Good. You tell me if you would ice it, as in it's not a good choice for a pair to skate to on oh, the show, good. or save it, which is it's great for a routine. Ready? Our first mm -hmm. song is. Good story. I save it. Oh my gosh. You would you would skate to turn 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 by the birds. It seems a bit on the nose. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it, you know, it's always it's not what Ron says. It's how he turns how he turns a phrase and or or my footwork. You know, like it, my steps are not so different than anyone else. But I, I think that I try to put some love into you know effort into it and and to see if that pays off. It's a little on the point, but how you use that point, um, I would. I think it's a keeper. And the birds uh, begat Tom Petty in my mind. Uh, I think more than any other band, uh, I'm sure you would say the Beatles if you were here, but uh, the birds and Tom Petty, who's my favorite artist. Mm. Uh, so I think it, he, and for me, Tom Petty is as close as we've gotten to Shakespeare in music, Gordon Downing being the other. Uh, just to understand that emotional connection. Uh, so that song yeah. works, it would be great. We'll see everyone. Turn, turn, turn. We're gonna, I like it. We're going to go a little outside. It's a little EDM for your electronic dance music that is mm. dubs with Tsunami. Ice it or save it, Kurt? I would save it for a select group of people who already know how to dance uh, off the ice. And I, and I don't think too many people could pull this off and be a, a good enough mover mm. um, to, to, to bring it to life and to be interesting enough. I think skating to this wouldn't be enough. I think you have to be able to dance. Maybe think? the Halloween show. We we do a <laughs> Halloween show where you break out uh, of character completely and you can sort of freewheel. That might be the only way, but no, I don't think our crew could handle that one. <laughs> Next up. Sheldon. That is the Arkells. Yes. Pride and Joy of Hamilton, Ontario, with the whistleblower. Ron, what do you think? Well, for sure. We're skating Kurt and I to Relentless uh, in show number one. We're going live for two and a half minutes to Max Kerman and the gang. And we are so excited to honor Hamilton, honor uh, Arkells, and uh, hopefully the sports of hockey and figure skating. But I'm just terrified, Tom. I don't know how you're, you... You're going to do it? You're gonna yeah, we're going to skate. I'm going to be in hockey skates, so I have a little you know, safety net there. I'll be on the blades I'm comfortable in. Oh uh, but God. yeah, we're going to do uh, Arkells music uh, in our show opener and I and Max I think is judging week two so uh, oh he, really uh, yeah he's I think he's because he's very close to Virtue and Moyer when they were installed in the Canada Walk of Fame he did the induction mm. so yeah Max will be a friend of our show for sure but that that sh song anything by Arkells works hold on who's getting lifted <laughs> yeah <laughs> well <laughs> it depends on the leather jacket yeah. if yours is too heavy <laughs> it depends on when we actually collide lifted. who's on the bottom to hip check the other yeah. <laughs> Garrett, what do you think Arkells would you do that one um I think that I think that whoever chose this music would have to have a, like a like a churning kind of um feeling to their skating mm. um there's lots of beautiful elegant skaters that wouldn't be able to pull it off and I, I immediately thought of one of our competitors in battle but Sheldon Kennedy who stepped on the ice on the media oh. day yesterday and everyone was blown away by his speed so I, I think Sheldon could pull it off. Now, we're, the last one is one I can't imagine anyone ever dancing to, but take a listen to this. <laughs> Come on with a rain, have a smile. Uh, maybe they had a great outfit. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> that is Gene Kelly and Singing in the Rain. Kurt, you made this song famous in the figure skating world. Mm -hmm. I think I know the answer to this one. I love skating to this piece because it involves uh, being lost in falling in love and not caring that it's rain, which was what the character Gene Kelly was doing um, at that night. And every time I perform it, I try to get to that zen, out of your mind state of, of knowing that you just fell in love. And, and I 
I, I love it. Okay. I love playing with the umbrella and the, tr the props and the hat and the whole the costume. And it's worth noting the group that did that uh, show for you, Singing in the Rain, was Insight Productions. So it's an incredible... Well, for my TV special. Yes. Yeah. So uh, Insight and I have had a long relationship. Both of my TV specials were, were filmed by Insight Productions. So mm -hmm. it's like... It's like old home. Can you see yourself dancing to that one, Rob? I, I can because uh, Gene Kelly's from Pittsburgh, and uh, so is Sidney Crosby kind of synonymous with Pittsburgh and the Stanley Cups there, and both of them uh, have feet wide apart and close to the ground, so I know what to do. I think you may be all right. Guys, it's so nice to have you here. Uh, <laughs> you're excited about Battle of the Blades coming back. I'm sure Canadians are excited to check it out as well. Cheers, Tom. Thank you.